Welcome to our special NRF edition of the OmniTalk Spotlight Series, the series that spotlights the companies, the people, and the technologies that are shaping the future of retail. I'm your host, Chris Walton. And I'm Ann Mazinga. And we are the founders of OmniTalk. And today's podcast is brought to you with the partnership and support of our NRF sponsors, Cleveron, Scandit, and Firework. Today, Ann and I are pleased to bring you one of our all-time favorite guests, one of the very first guests we've ever had on our program, which, Ann, I think it was like back in 2018. Yeah, Is that like how long we've been doing this? the grocery shop, I think. Yeah, was, yeah, whenever the hell that was. Mm -hmm. But anyway, back for his second appearance with us is Max Pedro, the co-founder and CEO of Takeoff. Max, welcome back. It's so great to speak with you again. It's my pleasure. Great to be with you today. Max, for the people that might not know you or are just learning about Takeoff, let's start this special NRF edition of the podcast with a little bit of the background on Takeoff and how it came to be, because it's a fantastic story. We founded Takeoff about five years ago, and we started it with one premise. Uh, consumers want their groceries online, and they want it cheaper and faster. And that's the entire company we put together to deliver precisely on that. Uh, we created this uh, model of micro-fulfillment. You basically put automation in, uh, in stores, in, in retail stores, very close to those consumers uh, and where they shop, and magic happens. Suddenly you have a C ecosystem that can deliver better economics than a retail store and 20 percentage point advantages over shopping manually a store like it's been done until today. So uh, I'll tell you more in a second. There's many, many things that need to happen for that to get delivered. And we're actually very proud to say that we're, we still believe we're the only micro fulfillment company that delivers on the promise of sell groceries online and the technology works and you can actually make more money than uh, selling in brick and mortar. Right, right, right. Well, talk us, talk us through that, Max. Like, get, if you don't mind, double click into that. So what specifically are the economic advantages to the model? Where do, where do the cost savings and, and the gains come into play? Like walk, walk the audience through that, if you will. Sure. It's, it, again, imagine automation very close to shoppers. Mm -hmm. You suddenly have incredible labor productivity because those uh, professional shoppers are now picking about 700 items per labor hour, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. That compares, that's 13 times more than if you go and manually shop a supermarket. Mm -hmm. But the second cost uh, advantage is you're very close to where those uh, shoppers live. If they want uh, a home delivery, you're suddenly a five minute Uber drive from where they live, not um, eight hour truck drive, which is what the model of automation looked like before. And if they want a drive through experience and pick up their groceries at their neighborhood supermarket, they can do that as well. That combination of labor productivity and proximity is what delivers that huge value. And what type of what type of size of operation are we talking about when you're deploying these in general now, Max? So in terms of where you've been, where you're going, in terms of the footprint, where you're putting the automation technology to get those economies of scale that you're talking about, just for everyone's edification, like how big are these these micro fulfillment centers for you at this point? We purposely emphasize the micro aspect of it. They're, they are typically 10,000 to 15,000 square feet, which is, uh, we can tuck it away in the back of most supermarkets. Yeah, I mean, I remember, Max, when we first uh, met with you back in, at Sedano's, one of the first deployments that was live to the public, you know, this was just right next to, it was like sharing a back of the house with a regular like grocery store experience. It wasn't like, you know, you needed this giant warehouse somewhere. Um, can you tell our listeners just to kind of give them a visual as we're explaining, like, what does that look like? You know, how many people are working on that site just to kind of build that image for them? Sure, sure. We like to compare, I don't know, even the footprint to, it's about a basketball court in size. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so have that in mind yeah. and to do about $30 million of very profitable e-commerce, you need about 10 to 12 people per shift. 
that compares to typically hundreds of people when you're running a supermarket. You've suddenly made people super, super productive and uh, all of the activities have been done so all of these uh, employees can actually cross train and do all of the activities. It's an orchestration that it's, it's a beauty to see. And Max, too, I think one of the parts, one of the points that I think often gets overlooked in this whole micro fulfillment conversation is while the, while the micro fulfillment site, as you guys are deploying them, are generally you know, in or very close to the store that it's servicing, it actually services much more from the total market perspective, right? It's not just servicing that store. It can service a whole range of various stores for their e-commerce activity, wherever they're operating, right? Like, am I thinking about that the right way? Because that, that's a key component of this, right? For a very small size footprint investment, you're able to hit the e-commerce aspect of the business from a much larger swath than people probably realize. In, in your you're completely right. We are a business case driven company. So we actually work with our clients in getting the logistics right to maximize the experience for that shopper. Clearly people want it faster. So staying close to where uh, that facility is enables you to deliver super rapid commerce uh, for them. But we also believe in letting uh, shoppers shop how they want. So whether they want to pick up, they want to home deliver, and they want to um, do it in that store or in a neighborhood store, our platform enables all of that, uh, all of those experiences in a very seamless manner. Yeah, just really getting the products closer to the customer, like you were saying earlier, whether they want to pick it up themselves or they want to deliver to their homes. Um, exactly. Exactly. Max, so th this has been like some years in development. If you wouldn't mind, you know, kind of explain for us where this all started, where you got, you started, you know, the first live site we mentioned back at Sedano's, but then how has this built up to the headlines we're reading in the news right now? Like what's been going on the last uh, three to four years in terms of development of, of the takeoff uh, micro fulfillment centers? Sure. Well, we got started with that uh, idea. You know, what happens in, in this world where you have to do two things that the shopper had to do for you, pick and pack and take it to their homes. How can you create a viable business? That was the initial idea. We knew that the economics were not sustainable. Charging more to consumers was not the answer. Um, and, and again, we, uh, we were the first ones to go to market. And we are proud to say that we, it's been three and a half years that we've been live. Yeah. We now have 20 live facilities with 11 clients and we have north of 45 more in construction right now. So that, uh, that uh, we are a company that one of the key things we strive for every day is how do we continuously learn? We learn so much in everything that needs to happen in here. It's, it's hardware, but it's well beyond hardware. It's all of the software pieces you need to wrap up uh, the processes with, uh, but it's all of the orchestration, assortment, inventory management, training, taking care of the human aspect of how do you run these, these facilities. It's how do you support and maintain these facilities uh, in a new environment, automation in retail space was not the norm. Automation lived in very big warehouses. So all of these details are the secret sauce that actually makes this uh, to click and, and fire on all cylinders. Yeah, that's what that's I'm glad you brought that up, Matt, because that's what I actually wanted to press you on. You know, I think from my role, from our role is like, you know, trying to be pretty frank and candid about, you know, how the future Vami channel retail is unfolding. But it feels like to me, like when I'm on LinkedIn, Every other day, some new micro fulfillment, robotics, automation, whatever you want to call it, company is, you know, kind of out there saying like they're the best thing since sliced bread. And then I sit back and I go, yeah, but how do I know that? And and like and then I look at you guys and you like you have three years of implementations and in those numbers you read, too, they're, they're also I think you have them on multiple continents, too. And there's a whole host of things that must go into this. And so. How do you, if I ask you point blankly, how do you differentiate yourself in this sea, which is a very hot topic right now, micro fulfillment and grocery, very hot topic. 
how do you kind of differentiate yourself in those boardrooms, in those discussions with executives along, along that dimension I'm talking about? Look, our, our main point of differentiation is the fact that we are the only ones in real life delivering <laughs> APIs that actually are happening. It's a good it's proof point, in my opinion. That's what I keep saying. Yeah. You, you're not a 3D model. You're, you're the actual we are, thing. We are not. Look, let me give you some stats. Uh, a, a typical facility of ours does $30 million in GMB. Has okay. Pull in units per labor hour of about 120 plus the pick rates at those pick stations are about 700 uh, units per labor hour and uh, the technology works the uptime is 99.9 percent uh, right that those kind of outputs are the critical components you need to be able to deliver what on PowerPoint, some people might claim, but we know we're the only ones delivering in real life. That's our biggest difference. And we actually like that. We actually like doing something that it's really hard. We actually believe that there's only two companies that have viable platforms. It's Ocado and ourselves. Ocado does a good job in very big facilities. We right. don't believe that big facilities is not even the present, clearly not the future. Right. Uh, Big facilities means next day delivery and a horrible, horrible cost of last mile and a really expensive and time, uh, time extended installation. Uh, doing it smaller is actually slightly harder because you suddenly put yourself at a point in which the promises to clients are minutes and these sites need to be run by uh, retail uh, associates. Uh, not uh, advanced technicians, making it harder. Actually, again, we like solving hard problems. And so much of these things that I mentioned before need to be put in place beyond hardware that if you just focus on the hardware, you're focusing on just one element of this chain. You need all of them to deliver this promise. Yeah, and then the point you mentioned about being smaller is harder. There's a part there's a part about smaller though that I like a lot, which I want you to comment on too, which is it's actually easier to to implement and do from the retailer's perspective, right? Like you can you can stand these up pretty quickly and 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 make good on the potential value proposition if you're willing to to basically take the jump into this idea, right? I mean, am I thinking about that wrong? I mean, when I look at Ocado, like those facilities are like millions and millions of dollars. Whereas with you guys, 15,000 square feet basketball court, that seems pretty doable for most retailers if they, if they want to get their arms around it. Like I always joke, it's, I think I've said this publicly. It's like, it's like an exec, it's like the executive team's salary for a year, you know, like it's their bonuses, like whatever it is. Like it's, it, I mean, comment on that, if you will. It, it, it is, it is. Look, the, it's, it's not only that the entry point, it's much, much better. We actually work hard on making it even more, uh, more um, palatable because we productize the solution. Mm. You don't have to do all the things that are time consuming that typically makes automation be a three year since you signed to launch a business. We actually uh, like to say it's three months since we have a site that it's ready to launch. We, in three months, we can actually get you live. But productizing this also gets you a lot of, it's beyond you save costs in, autom in, 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 in engineering and all these kind of things. It enables you to have um, serviceability and an uptime and a product mindset that um, it, it's, it's only happening in agile companies like ours. Mm -hmm. it, that's precisely what you need at the stage of the game. And the stage of the game now is, is, has moved from let's test this to let's really roll out the yeah. full fulfillment capabilities uh, that these clients need. So we're in an exciting time and we look forward to this year is going to be a, an explosion of volume uh, for the takeoff family. Uh, and we're getting, we're, we're super ready for it. That's awesome. Well, Max, let's go, let's go to what's next. I want to hear where takeoff is going because you called out some important things. You know, retailers are starting to realize that this kind of format in real estate that they might already own or small real estate that's adjacent to stores that they already own 
that can really allow their current retail associates to just jump in. I know it's possible because I walked into Sedano's and started filling orders. So it's you not did. required. If I can do that. Yes, if I can do it, any retail associate can do it. But I'm, I'm serious in that like, you know, it's not just the technology that's going in the store. It's, sure. it's also the operational efficiencies that you get from deploying this technology. So what can we expect next? Because I, I think there's gonna be a lot of retailers um, if they haven't already talked to you, uh, listening to this, who want to know, like, what's in the future? What's what can we expect? Sure. Well, the first thing we're going to deliver is scalability and that business case for our clients. No, so that's the core bread and butter. That's what the industry is dying for, and we are actually at a point in which we we're becoming uh, very careful on choosing our partners correctly and choosing, uh, making these very solid investments. So right. the magic happens at scale with these partnerships. So that is that is the first exciting thing we're, we're getting ready for. Okay. Uh, the second piece is uh, our product continues to get better every day. We are like Tesla. We are backwards compatible every two weeks, new features, new, uh, new solutions, um, a bunch of focus on now working with quick commerce platforms, which is a reality of the mm. market and making that right. happen. Mm. All of these things are happening for all future, but all already installed uh, um, uh, MFCs that we have with our clients. So that backwards compatibility and suddenly you wake up and you suddenly can do uh, variable weight and you can do uh, frozen within the facilities and doing um, suddenly better integrations with companies like Uber or several others uh, that are in the market dying for, uh, for this manpower of who can assemble orders in this, in this world where there's basically no unemployment right now in North America. All of these things are things that we're tackling uh, very seriously and with a steady uh, pace, but with this agile mentality that it's second to none. Yeah, well, I, I love I love the quick commerce tease there. That was that was that that's got my interest peaked there for sure, Max. I, I, I want to close with this then because I think this is actually probably a good way to kind of close up the interview, put a pin on it. You know, you mentioned you mentioned you know being very selective with the clients that you're using, and and one of the ones that I think you know made the headlines in December was Albertsons, and you guys unveiled a new facility with Jewel Osco in Chicago. I think if I'm not if I remember right, the governor even was there at the unveiling. Um, <laughs> And the point of the point you said too that that was really interesting when I was reading about it was, you know, there's also an employment opportunity here. I mean, I think mm -hmm. if, if, I, if I remember correctly, there were 70 new employees that were going to be assigned to this center. Talk to us if you can, just to close it up about the significance of the Albertsons relationship, the announcement with Jewel, and and you know what and what that means in the landscape of this discussion. Sure. Well, um, we continue to be extremely proud of our relationship with Albertsons, uh, Safeways, and their many banners across the, the United States. This Jewel Osco launch was one more of the many that are happening as we speak uh, with, with that great company that is definitely winning in the marketplace. Uh, and as one of the most advanced and sophisticated players over there, they have their footprints on, on everything. They have their footprints on their own 1P, but they have incredible partnerships uh, with many of the platforms. Um, so, and, and, and we have a very incredibly solid relationship with their, with their leadership and their operational teams. So the things that are important for them are important for us. And we're working them hand in hand to make them uh, happen. Uh, incredible results, incredible story, and one to really be proud of. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well said. Yeah, Albertsons has got a just seems like a hell of a leadership team right now. I know Anne has a mm -hmm. has a crush on uh, Chris Rupp over there too, and and uh, the CEO there is doing a bang up job too. And any final questions you want to ask Max before we let him off the let him off the hot seat here? You know, I think one thing I want to ask you, Max, because especially in the Albertsons deployment, we noted when we were talking about that in the Fast Five that, you know, that's just down the street from one of the new Amazon Fresh stores. And I, I'd like to get your thoughts on, like, as you're talking to retailers, especially grocers, you know, how do they consider, you know, micro fulfillment in the process or like strategy of how they're going to really beef up the ability to serve 
so many more customers, you know, from that micro fulfillment location that's, you know, in their stores? Do they feel like that's a, one of the most defensible moves against Amazon kind of coming in on the, the regional grocery turf? Sure. Well, it, it is Amazon, but it's several other very big players. No jockeying for positions. It's, mm -hmm. it's some of the traditional uh, retailers doing a, a, a bang up job. Um, but it's also the, the platforms are an interesting angle. No, the platforms are um, clearly a partner for some of our clients, but sometimes even a competitor. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a very interesting uh, ecosystem. Um, I'll, I'll say this, while brick and mortar grocery is super fragmented, online groceries is not. The ticket to entry uh, and to be successful in online is actually pretty steep. Uh, and we are very proud to say that everything we invested at Takeoff is to make that access to uh, retailers and platforms much faster and much more palatable. This is this is one that um, we've cracked the code on how to fulfill online groceries and uh, make viable businesses behind this. Mm -hmm. And by being the only company in the world that has done that, you 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 notice that it's something hard and there is no time to figure these things out and the price point of getting it done it's in the hundreds of, of millions of dollars and that's what you need to spend to get all of the aspects of technology uh, that i mentioned before it's hardware but it's software it's orchestration training servicing maintenance the the, the, the ai that feeds this beast the AI is a critical component that enables you to sweat this platform and be there for your shoppers. Uh, all of these things are super, the, the learning curves are very steep and you actually have to have, we now have 280 uh, people in the team of which 80% are software engineers or product leaders. You need to have that caliber of people to uh, be able to capture this the right way. Um, so whether it's Amazon or many of the other people that are concentrating those sales, you better be ready because the time to play this <laughs> game now, three years from now, it's no longer a luxury, it's a necessity. You need to be open for that shopper that wants to buy online. This will happen even be beyond after we are all kind of like, you know, don't have the concern of getting uh, this kind of horrible virus contagions. People have now been force fed right. and been trained that they can get their supermarket cart delivered on their, their door within minutes. Uh, so you need to be open for that business. And, and we're the perfect uh, way to be open for that business in a way that takes the technology complexity uh, off their hands and go with something that it's tested pressure tested by many uh, of the best uh, supermarket chains across the globe and ready to scale really quickly at uh, that supermarket's own pace. That's a great question, Dan. I love that. I mean, I, I don't know. And Max just keeps happening to us. Like we just had this happen. Where I get this big aha, like in the last like two minutes of the interview. And I'm always hoping that everyone, you know, is sticking with the conversation. But like for me, it, the way I'd sum up what you just said is, you know, what you guys do, it enables the grocers to take, take control of their own destiny again, you know, it enables them to have the relationship they want with their customers. I mean, you look at, you mentioned the platforms and, you know, how much of a stranglehold they have on third-party delivery as a concept, like it gives them that power back. And I think that's ultimately what this is. And, and like you said, in the very beginning, how you started, it also makes it economically viable. Like it makes e-commerce economically viable, which has always been a question, you know, in general, whether it's grocery or almost any category. Um, so that's my big takeaway. So thank you for exposing that to me at the end. And then the parts too about just, I think the funny thing too, just to close it up, like the part about maintenance too, you know, like, you know, you've got to make sure these things are working. These robots, this automation is working day in and day out. And, you know, how is some, you know, just flash in the pan uh, automation company going to be able to prove that out? They're not. And that's why I think the track record that you guys have is so important in this discussion. All right, well, Max, that closes us up. Um, thanks for that discussion. If, if people want to get in touch with you personally, learn more about takeoff, maybe see you guys at NRF. What's the best way for them to do that? Sure. 
so common visitors at our booth at NRF were close to the innovation lab uh, or pinged us there at nanotakeoff.com and you'll see all the contact info. We'll be happy to chat with you. Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks to you, Max Pedro, co-founder and CEO of Takeoff for sitting down with us today. And I wanna to say too, while uh, we've got the chance, thank you for all your support of our work over the years, especially our weekly Fast Five podcast for the past few years, you guys have been our sponsor. You're gonna be our sponsor again for 2022. It's always our absolute pleasure to sit down with you. So on behalf of Anne, Max, myself, everyone listening, please enjoy NRF. And as always, be careful out there. This special NRF podcast was made possible through the support of the following sponsors. Cleveron. Cleveron is a full-service package handover partner offering in- and outdoor locker solutions to retailers and grocers worldwide. Cleveron has more than 13 years of experience and partnerships with the biggest names in the business. Head to Cleveron's LinkedIn page to get in touch with Cleveron's representatives here at NRF. And Scandit. Scandit's smart data capture platform helps retailers delight customers and automate store operations through unmatched speed, accuracy, and intelligence. From the shop floor to back of house, retailers can move processes onto smart devices while boosting employee efficiency and retention. Scandit also enables great customer experience services like scan and go and personalized promotions to enhance loyalty. And finally, Firework. Firework lets you implement shoppable short form video and live stream commerce on any website or app on the open web. Why rent a kiosk in someone else's bazaar when you can have a storefront of your own? Take back your business, take back your brand with Firework.